Construction Equipment showcases its Total Solutions credentials by highlighting products and services that increase customer uptime and lowering owning and operating costs. Volvo helps their customers for choosing the right machines and methods as this kind of mass excavation comes down to carefully detailing owning and operating costs. Owning costs and operating costs of equipment has significant impact on profitability of work executed. The company has categorized ownership costs of construction equipment into fixed cost and variable cost. Equipment performance, capacity to do the job, and the cost are all parts of its decision process. However, the purchase price cost is only one factor in its real lifetime construction equipment cost. Operating costs are incurred by all equipment, unless the equipment has no cost to operate, requires no personnel or space, and never wears out. In some cases, equipment appear to have low or no operating cost because either the cost is not recognized or is being absorbed in whole or part by the cost of something else. So now, how can a company analyze the ownership cost and cost of operating construction equipment? Hello all, and welcome to this lecture, Cost of Owning and Operating Construction Equipment, where we shall understand the ways to calculate the total different types of cost and owning and operating construction equipment. After the lecture, we will be able to learn the following objectives. Understand ownership cost and total ownership cost. Discuss the cost of operating construction equipment. Explain the methods of calculating ownership and operating cost. Let's start with a brief introduction to cost of owning and operating construction equipment. A thorough understanding of both estimated and actual costs of operating and owning equipment drives profitable equipment management. Plant, equipment, and tools used in construction operations are priced in the three categories in the estimate. Small tools and consumables, hand tools up to a certain value together with blades, drill bits, and other consumables used in the project are priced as a percentage of total labor price of the estimate. Equipment is usually shared by a number of work activities. These kinds of equipment items are kept at the site over a period of time and are used in the work progress. Equipment used for specific tasks. These are capital items and used in projects such as digging trenches or hoisting material into specified slots. Let's now discuss the ownership cost. The economic use of equipment is related to its employment cost. Hourly plant employment cost forms the basis for the cost estimation of work executed by the plant. The plant employment cost can be determined by computing plant owning and operating costs. Initial cost. Initial cost is the total cost of building a stage of the spacecraft. For low performance craft, the structure cost and labor cost are similar. A project's initial costs are those that are incurred during the design and construction process. They can include any of the following. Planning, preliminary engineering, and project design. Environmental impact report. Project related staff training. Final engineering. Land acquisition. Depreciation. Depreciation is the loss in market value of the plant over a period of time, resulting from usage, wear, and tear, or age. There are several methods of calculating the annual depreciation that should be charged to the project to cover the plant capital cost. Single line depreciation. A method of computing Amortization or depreciation is by dividing the difference between an asset's cost and its expected salvage value by the number of years it's expected to be used. Sum of years digits depreciation. This is an accelerated method for calculating an asset's depreciation. 
This method takes the asset's expected life and adds together the digits for each year. So if the asset was expected to last for five years, the sum of the year's digits would be obtained by adding 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 to get a total of 15. Double declining balance depreciation. This is one of two common methods that a business uses to account for the expense of a long-lived asset. The double declining balance depreciation method is an accelerated depreciation method that counts twice as much of the asset's book value each year as an expense compared to straight line depreciation. Investment or interest cost. The costs cover interest on the money invested in equipment, plant, taxes of all types, insurances, licenses, and storage expenses. Rates for these costs vary with owners and locations. However, these can be estimated based on the prevailing rates at the project location. Insurance tax and storage costs. Insurance cost represents the cost incurred due to fire, theft, accident, and liability insurance for the equipment. Tax cost represents the cost of property tax and licenses for the equipment. Total ownership cost, or TOC, or total cost of ownership, TCO, is a concept that is increasingly used in business around the world. The essence of the concept is that the full cost of a decision should be evaluated rather than focusing on the initial purchase price. Plant costs. Plant can be classified as non-mechanical, mechanical, or small tools. The cost of small tools for exclusive use of craftsmen is sometimes added as a percentage of their salary rate. Material costs. The costs of materials include their net costs delivered to the site or to the contractor's workshops. Added to this are the costs of storage and a wastage factor covering the distance between the quantities of materials purchased and those eventually integrated in construction products paid for by the client. We shall discuss the cost of operating construction equipment. Operating costs of the construction equipment, which represent a significant cost category and should not be overlooked, are the costs associated with the operation of a piece of equipment. They are incurred only when the equipment is actually used. Maintenance and repair cost. The cost of maintenance and repairs usually constitutes the largest amount of operating expense for the construction equipment. Construction operations can subject equipment to considerable wear and tear, but the amount of wear varies enormously between the different items of the equipment used and between different job conditions. Consumable costs. Consumables are the items required for the operation of a piece of equipment that literally get consumed in the course of its operation. These include, but are not limited to, fuel lubricants, and other petroleum products. Fuel cost. Fuel consumption is incurred when the equipment is operated. When operating under standard conditions, a gasoline engine will consume approximately 0.06 gallon of fuel per flywheel horsepower hour, while a diesel engine will consume approximately 0.04 gallon per flywheel horsepower hour. Lubricating oil cost. The quantity of oil required by an engine per change will include the amount added during the change plus the makeup oil between changes. It will vary with the engine size, the capacity of crankcase, the condition of the piston rings, and the number of hours between oil changes. Mobilization and demobilization cost. This is the cost of moving the equipment from one job site to another. It's often overlooked because of the assumption that the previous job would have already paid for it. Equipment operating cost. The cost of operating the equipment or plant includes fuel costs, routine maintenance costs, major repair costs, operator's cost, 
higher replacement costs, and overhead costs. Most of the construction plants at project sites use combustion ignition engines as the prime mover. Routine maintenance costs. Maintenance costs include the cost of lubricating oil, grease, filters, batteries, minor repairs, and the labor involved in performing maintenance. The quantity of lubricating oil required for lubrication can be calculated from the manufacturer's manual showing the number of hours after which the oil changing is needed. Special items cost. The cost of replacing high wear items such as dozer, grater, and scraper blade, cutting, and end bits, as well as ripper tips, shanks, and shank protectors should be calculated as a separate item of the operating cost. As usual, unit cost is divided by the expected life to yield cost per hour. We shall now talk about the methods of calculating ownership and operating cost. Producers can find guidance to these management decisions by calculating the costs of operating and owning farm machinery. The best source of information to budget farm machinery costs is actual farm level records. In the absence of farm records, calculation methods can be used to estimate the costs. Business costs are often classified as being either fixed or variable. And this means they're fixed or variable in relation to sales performance. If a particular cost remains pretty constant regardless of how well the business is doing, then it's fixed. If the cost increases when things get busy, then it's variable. Costs that are fixed in many businesses include utility bills like gas, electricity and water, vehicle running costs, telephone and internet costs, rent and rate on premises, and most employee wages. Variable costs typically include things like raw materials or ingredients, packaging, delivery, and employees whose wages vary depending on how much work they do. Remember that these costs are linked directly to how busy the business is at any particular time. Not everything fits perfectly into these two categories. Some fixed costs will vary a bit. The lights might get left on a bit longer and the telephone might be used a bit more when things are busy. It's best not to get too bogged down with this. If a cost is pretty constant, call it a fixed cost. Also, some costs remain constant up to a certain sales level and then jump up considerably. A business might eventually need to take on an extra employee or even open a new factory if things get really busy. These costs are called steps costs and allowance sometimes needs to be made for them. Now back in the first video, we saw that the terms turnover, sales, and revenue are sometimes used interchangeably. Well, there's more than one way of describing these cost classifications as well. Variable costs vary in direct proportion to sales levels, so they're sometimes called direct costs. They're also sometimes referred to as cost of sales. Fixed costs, meanwhile, are sometimes called indirect costs or overheads. Accountants might argue that these terms don't all mean exactly the same thing, but for our purposes, we can treat them as interchangeable. For now, we'll stick with using fixed and variable costs, as long as you're aware that they're sometimes called other things as well. Businesses also spend money on things that don't fit into either of these categories. Things that aren't used up straight away, like equipment, machinery, buildings and vehicles. I've put these under the heading capital expenditure. At first, you might assume that these should be classified as fixed costs, but you'd be wrong. Because, and this is a difficult concept, they're not actually costs at all. 
Here's the formula that I introduced in the first video in this series. You can see that a cost is something that reduces a business's profit. If, for instance, a company buys a forklift truck for £10,000, then it's swapped £10,000 worth of money for £10,000 worth of forklift truck. It's still got £10,000 worth of stuff. Because of this, the purchase does not reduce the business's profitability. So the purchase of something that's not used up straight away is not a cost. There usually is a cost associated with these items, and that cost is called depreciation. So, a company buys a forklift truck for £10,000. The value of its new truck is the same as the value of the money it used to have. So the cost to the business is zero. However, over the course of the next year, the truck gets a little bit older and a little bit rustier. In 12 months' time, it's only worth £8,000. So the cost to the business during that year is £2,000, even though no money has changed hands. Capital expenditure affects how much money a business has got, but it's not counted as a cost. Instead, we add another item called depreciation to the business's fixed costs. Guidelines for computing machine ownership costs. Costs incurred for machinery ownership and operation are usually divided into two categories, fixed costs and operating or variable costs. Guidelines for estimating the costs in each of these categories are fixed costs. Fixed costs generally include the costs that are incurred regardless of whether the machine is actually used in production. These costs do not vary with the amount of machine use. Fixed costs are sometimes referred to as ownership and or overhead costs. Depreciation. Depreciation is a non-cash expense of machinery ownership that must be recognized. Depreciation expense accounts for deterioration in the value of machinery because of age or technological obsolescence. Interest. Investment in machinery requires capital and should therefore be assigned a capital cost regardless of whether or not dollars are borrowed to purchase the machinery. If the money to purchase machinery is borrowed, the calculated interest cost should be at least large enough to cover the interest paid on the loan. Shelter, insurance, taxes. For most machines, these three costs are usually less than depreciation and interest, but they still need to be acknowledged. Some researchers indicate that a quick guideline would be to charge an amount equal to 2% of the purchase price to estimate the expense of all three of these costs. Operating costs. These generally include those costs that are incurred as a direct result of the machine being used. These costs vary as machine use varies. Fuel, lubrication, and labor. Fuel and lubrication costs can be figured either by the hour or by the acre with knowledge of the fuel consumption rate per hour and the number of acres completed in one hour. Lubrication. According to the Nebraska tractor test data, a general rule of thumb can be applied for estimating the cost of lubrication. For non-power equipment, 5% of the purchase price is used. Labor. Labor cost is calculated using the cost of labor per hour. Labor charges should be included in machinery cost calculations and should cover the total cost of labor, including the average wage rates as well as benefits, taxes, and payroll overhead costs paid to the machine operator. Repairs. Repairs are fixed costs in some respects and operating costs in other respects. Major repairs such as engine overhauls may be regarded as fixed costs 
if the owner knows in advance and budgets for the expense. Guidelines for estimating total annual machine costs. Accurate machine costs are necessary for some management decisions. However, obtaining accurate costs of owning and operating machinery often requires considerable time and effort. Low cost category. For machines that are used infrequently and or have few moving parts, annual total cost of operating the machine can be approximated by taking 15% off the purchase price. Average cost category. For machines that are used about the average amount and or have only a moderate number of wearing parts, 20% of the purchase price will approximate annual total cost. High cost category for machines that have a large number of wearing parts and or more than average use, 25% of the purchase price will approximate annual total cost. Evaluating alternatives to machine ownership. For some machinery investment decisions, machinery ownership and operating cost are calculated for comparisons to the current custom rate. If the capital invested in a machine is to be used efficiently, that machine must be used over enough acres or for enough hours to have costs comparable to or below the same operation being done by a custom operator. Farm Custom Rate Survey Updated listings of custom rates for various farming operations are available from the South Dakota Agricultural Statistics Service. The custom rate fact sheet reports results collected from a cross-section of producers, agribusinesses, implement dealers, and chemical applicators. Caterpillar Method The Caterpillar Method is a likable name for a popular means of solving algorithmic tasks. The idea is to check elements in a way that is reminiscent of movements of a caterpillar. The caterpillar crawls through the array. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. Depreciation is the loss in market value of the plant over a period of time, resulting from usage, wear and tear, or age. Insurance cost represents the cost incurred due to fire, theft, accident, and liability insurance for the equipment. The costs cover interest on the money invested in equipment, plant, taxes of all types, insurances, licenses, and storage expenses. A method of computing amortization by dividing the difference between an asset's cost and its expected salvage value by the number of years it's expected to be used. Initial cost equals initial labor plus initial structure.